Greetings Exiles. I'll start my video with a little motivating intro. Wow, valuable loot from a metamorph. Pretty rare. Finally, my first real loot goblin. My favorite gift. Two at once. That's the power of blue altars. Another take, and honestly I like it better than the last one. I hope your magic find goes as well as mine and you found your lucky loot goblins. I'm continuing my journey, but before I go on my shopping for new upgrades, let's sell some loot. Plus 11 divine orbs. I hope this poor and addicted soul finds his jackpot. And another 12 divine orbs to my stash. Ouch. 10 sextant scam. Let's give them back to whoever paid for them. Another gambling enjoyer. And my favorite part. So satisfying. Isn't it? That's about it. Now let's have a look at the end result. I want to remind you that in the last video, my currency stash looked like this. And now it looks like this. Pretty good. Mr. YouTuber, that's all well and good, but me and your other viewers have an important question. How long did it take you to earn that much currency to buy Headhunter? You probably spent weeks, maybe even months, on all of this. Really good question. Using MF strategy, which I told you about in my last video, you can expect 4 to 5 divine orbs per hour. But it's not so simple here, because magic find is not exactly a stable way of earning. And sometimes your earnings will be less than 4 divine orbs because there are bad days, and sometimes it will be much more over 10 divine orbs per hour. Also you can always hit the jackpot, like I did on my other character. when you literally become richer by 70 divine orbs in one second. Since I always want to be honest and straightforward with you, let's take a look at some of my earnings over the last couple of days. First, I want to show you how much I found Union. And those of you who are doing their first steps in Magic Find might have a question, why do we need this information? And why it's so important? But it's very simple, according to the data we should find one brother's gift and one brother's stash for every 89 Unions. So I should have found 11 of each of those divination cards. But if we look at my cards, we see that I found 13 brothers stash and only 6 brothers gifts. And as a result, my current MF session wasn't exactly successful because I should have gotten 15 to 20 more divine orbs. And to tell you the truth, that's a pretty significant difference. I tell you all this and show it not because I want to cry and complain about my bad luck. And to demonstrate to you the real picture that MF does not always bring that earnings that we count on. And this time luck wasn't exactly on my side. But I've had days when it was exactly the opposite and I found a lot more brothers gifts than I was supposed to. So I'll give you some important advice. Be patient. You will definitely need it. Because you are sure to have unlucky days. But luck is always waiting for you after that. But getting back to the question about how much time it takes to earn on Headhunter, we can make a simple calculation to answer this question. Right now it costs 96 divine orbs, so if we earn 4 divine orbs per hour, then that should take 24 hours. But as I said before, you never know what's waiting for you when you play an MF character. Sometimes it'll be 20 hours, and other times you can get that Headhunter in a couple of hours. But enough of this ranting, and let's buy this damn Headhunter already. I didn't buy the belt itself, I bought the doctor's cards, because that's a little better value. Finally, we've reached the main stage of my journey, and let's see what this build can do with this unique belt. As I said earlier, you will notice the difference immediately especially in terms of visual clarity. I don't know about you, but I love this kind of gameplay. It feels so good. Okay, all jokes aside. Now playing is much easier, and most importantly now we spend a lot less time to clear a single map. 
Besides, now we can easily run T16 corrupted maps with 8 mods, which also slightly increases our earnings per hour and allows us to buy new equipment much faster. Speaking of gear, if you thought that Headhunter was my final purchase, it's not and we still have a couple of improvements to make. First of all, Forbidden Flesh and Flame with Gratuitous Violence. Pretty pricey purchase, and is it really worth it you might ask? Yes. First of all, we free up a glove slot, so we can use Satama's Touch with Curse Enemies with Vulnerability on hit. And that's an extra 10% quantity of items found. Exactly what we need. Also, these unique jewels increase our damage, because they give us 20% more physical damage over time. And bleeding enemies you kill explode, dealing 10% of their maximum life as physical damage instead of the 5% we had with our previous gloves. All in all, a very useful purchase. By the way, after buying a headhunter, we no longer need inspired learning. So remove it and free up a couple of skill points which you can spend at your own discretion. Next, I plan to make a couple of premium upgrades because at this stage the build is fully up to its purpose. But if you want, as I do, to invest more in your character, then you should change our wand. You can buy the right one, but let's go with crafting. For starters, we need the right base. Fractured T1 or T2 damage over time multiplier and a high attack speed. Now we'll need corroded, shuddering, jagged, and metallic fossils. We need to get plus one to all spell skill gems. Wow, right off the bat. Now we need a free suffix, so we use Orb of Annulment. Hopefully the plus one to all spell skill gem stays. And again with the first time. And I'm not bad at crafting, isn't it? Next step is Benchcraft, cannot roll attack modifiers. Now use Harvestcraft, add a new physical modifier and remove another random one. Here we should remember to pray to the gods of randomness, because if we lose plus one to all spell, we'll have to repeat all the previous steps, and that will cost us around seven divine orbs. Personally, when I do some hard craft, I always make an offering. I hope my sacrifice will make Chris happy. And I'll get it right the first time. Lucky. But I don't think you doubted it. Well, the hardest part is over, and we have a nearly perfect wand. Next we use Benchcraft again, but this time its prefixes cannot be changed and we go back to Harvestcraft. Find there Reforge a rare item with random modifiers. And here we are guaranteed to get a physical damage over time multiplier. The only question is what tier it will be. I got T4 and I'll probably stop here. But if you want T2 or even T1, you can redo these last two steps. But personally I think it's not worth it. And at the end, one more Benchcraft 13% increased attack speed. As I see it, we have a good wand and I spent about 15 Divine Orbs on its craft. You might say it's pretty expensive, but if we look at how much those wands sell for. Wow, what a price these days. You could tell it was pretty budget friendly. I'm done with craft and let's keep shopping. Because I have one more important thing to buy. Namely, a great wolf talisman with increased quantity of items found. At least 18%. This swap will allow us to increase our quantity of items by another 8% and it will allow us to find valuable loot more consistently. This was the last purchase in this video because I already spent a huge amount of divine orbs and my currency stash is empty again. So I'm going back to my beloved cemetery. Once again in search of gifts. But honestly, this is not all the improvements you can make. For example, you can replace the granite flask with the progenesis. This will increase our survivability even more. Also, we need this watcher's eye. So if you have extra currency, feel free to buy it. But personally, I'm done with this character and my journey has come to an end. I hope that my series of videos have inspired you to have similar adventures. Also, I hope that you don't forget to like it, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel so as not to miss new videos. Bye everyone and see you in the new videos.